CTFs. I believe they are one of the best ways to learn hacking. And it's not only because you learn technically by doing it, but also because it is a competition. It is motivating, it's thrilling, or it can be, hopefully, to you. So here's one suggestion how you should approach CTFs. First, you go to ctftime.org. Then you click on Upcoming and check the upcoming CTFs. Personally, I like the Jeopardy CTFs the most, and I guess you should make sure that it's an online CTF. When you see a wait for a CTF, that means basically two things. First of all, it means when you play it and you get points in the CTF, uh, your score will feed into the yearly overall score on CTF time, which is kind of cool. You see then your team or your name being tracked there overall for all the CTFs. But not only that, for a CTF to have a weight, it also means that they had successful CTFs previously. And depending on the difficulty of the CTF, the weight is higher or lower. So CTFs with a weight of zero are often new or are not very, or are not difficult at all, but most of the time they are new. And then depending on the weight score, you can see if they are harder or easier CTFs. So for example, here the uh, C3 CTF coming up uh, at the end of the year again has a very high weight of 63. So this will be a very, very difficult CTF. You might be scared to take a CTF like this with a weight and you might tend towards a zero CTF. I mean, you should play as many as you want and you should definitely check out uh, the zero CTFs as well. But I guess if you have limited time, it's better to look for CTFs that have a weight because generally weighted CTFs are played more, which means there will be more write-ups, hopefully. First of all, think of a day where you can spend at least two hours on a CTF and then you check if there's a CTF at that day. So let's say you play the Xmas CTF 2019. So there's a website, you go there, you register and do all this stuff, and then you play the CTF for two hours. When the CTF happens, you will be there and you will spend your two hours on basically just researching. You will select one or two challenges that sound kind of interesting to you, and you might feel like, ah, oh, you could maybe understand them, and then you try it out. And then you try your best. You research, you Google, and you take notes take extensive notes of everything you tried and everything you thought about, any ideas you had, take notes of what you thought. And if you have ideas, try to validate them, try to see if they are correct or wrong. Anyway, you get the point. Write a lot of notes about this challenge. If you solve it, awesome, congrats. But most likely, you will fail. You will not solve any challenge, which is totally fine. This is part of the joy of CTF. It should make you frustrated and thus motivated to find out what the actual solution will be. And don't be annoying. Don't go in IRC and ask people for solutions and hints and tips while the CTF is still running. That's really terrible behavior. Don't do this. And then when the CTF is over, you wait a couple of days, maybe even a week or two weeks. And then you go back to CTF time and you look at the page of that event. And when you scroll down, there should be an events task and write-ups button. Click on there and then you should see here the different tasks listed and if there are write-ups available. And then you can click on here on write-ups. So apparently here are three write-ups. Let's click on one. Okay, it's basically just a link to a blog. And so now we can read the write-up here of this challenge. And now you study this write-up. You read this write-up and you compare it to your notes. Were you on the right track? Were you close? Uh, what did you get right? And then more importantly, what did you get wrong? Which ideas did you not have? Which technologies did you not know about? What kind of attack ideas did you not know about? Analyze yourself and figure out what you were missing. And I assure you, next time you see a challenge like this, you will know it. And this is the whole CTF learning process. If you can't find write-ups on CTF time, there's still a good chance that you can just Google for it once Google indexes blogs that people were writing, or you can also search on GitHub or GitHub Gists or Pastebins directly. Besides CTF time, just Googling and GitHub, you can also look on Twitter. A lot of times people will share their write-ups on Twitter, and so you can use the name of the CTF or kind of a hashtag made out of it, and maybe you can find then write-ups. Oftentimes, CTFs also have an IRC channel. Uh, look in the FAQs of the CTF. It's often sometimes hidden somewhere there. And be in the IRC channel when the CTF ends. People will then be sharing their solutions and you can ask questions 
and you can just observe also the discussion, what people are writing about challenges. This is also an awesome opportunity to learn. And that's basically the whole secret to CTFs. Just accept that you don't know everything and that you will fail a lot, but each failed CTF challenge is a new opportunity to learn something interesting. And I encourage you, go for CTFs that look a bit harder. Don't go for the easy ones, okay? If you just solve like 10 challenges, you don't really learn anything because you already knew what to do. You were just like speed running it at this point. There's kind of a sweet spot that you wanna get. You don't wanna get too hard because there are crazy crypto challenges or pwnable challenges that are so hard that you need a lot of experience. And this will be frustrating. You will not understand those write-ups. I will not understand them either, right? So there are these challenges that are too hard. But then there are also the challenges that are way too easy where you don't learn anything. So basically you will you want to find the sweet spot of a challenge that is too hard for you right now, but theoretically maybe doable with enough time or where you then understand the write-up. This is kind of the sweet spot. Sometimes you will accidentally try out a challenge that turned out way too hard and sometimes it was a way too easy challenge and you solved it. But so once you do many CTFs, you will oftentimes run into this nice sweet spot and this is where you can really, really learn stuff. And don't care about the points. Don't care how many challenges you solve. It's not about the points. It's about learning something, okay? So don't care about this. Don't beg for people for flags or solutions during the CTF. Wait until the CTF is over and then you can ask people. Now, I'm usually playing with my CTF team, but this has not always been the case for me. When I started, I also started alone. So don't be discouraged and have the feeling, oh, I need a CTF team. Everybody's playing in a CTF team. That's not true. Especially when you are learning, when you're starting out, you will probably do this alone. I played CTFs for a couple of years alone until I suddenly ran into my CTF team. So, so don't worry about that. Uh, you will hopefully eventually find maybe a group of people that you like to play CTFs together with. There are so many Discord communities out there where you, if you ask if some people want to play CTFs, I'm sure you can find a couple of people to do so. And maybe a team is made out of it. Anyway, please take two hours, try a CTF, and then maybe take another hour a couple of days or a week later to look at write-ups. That's all I'm asking for. So see you next video.